Welcome, everyone. This is the 18th of March, 2024 meeting of the Jenkins Governance Board. And we've got Uli's not here yet, so let me make that update. Okay, got it. So upcoming calendar items, weekly Reese 2.450 tomorrow. And we're approaching a point where we'll be choosing a new LTS baseline. I don't know if it's this week or in over the next course of two or four weeks, but we're not that far from a choice of a new LTS baseline. So thanks everyone for your work on weeklies. 2.440.2 LTS releases on Wednesday of this week. And I encourage, there's a, a comment in the change log or in the upgrade guide related to Jakarta Mail that warns people they need to upgrade two plug if they have if they have one of a certain plugin they need to update another one in lockstep and basil i think that was a, a note you had asked for to be sure that people understand they need to do that well it was um it was a note that kevin had asked for because he was trying to find ways to highlight these types of changes in more places and we had agreed that even though it's not tied to a particular core release, that the core upgrade guide would be a highly visible place to put that information. Good. Okay. So that means, so it's, I like that. So it's an intentional choice to broaden the upgrade guide to try to reach the users for things that may matter to them. Good. Yeah. Um, it, it, it has been also documented in the plugin release notes, but we felt that people wouldn't read those as carefully as the core upgrade guide. Excellent. Thank you. On next major events, CDCon 2024 happens April 16 through 18 in Seattle, Washington. I'll be attending. I'll take notes and I promise to share my notes, at least the handwritten versions. They've got a bunch of talks about helping communities, helping open source projects as they navigate the challenges of ongoing maintenance, care, growth, funding, etc. So this one is very much focused on open source and open source projects. And thanks to Basel and to Alyssa Tong, the three of us attended Southern California Linux Expo over the weekend, and we had a great time presenting and sharing Jenkins at a booth there. Any questions on events or any anything I missed on calendar? Okay, next topic then was on news. So Google Summer of Code, we're very near the submission deadline for proposals by the candidates. Uh, I think that's sometime late March or very, very early April. And just be aware that Google has opened the submissions now, so candidates can submit their proposals. Jenkins Awards are in, voting is in progress for the Jenkins Awards. Most Valuable Jenkins Advocate. Uh, congratulations to Alexander for being nominated there, and Bruno as well. Uh, Most Valuable Jenkins Contributor. Basel, thank, congratulations for being nominated there. And Jenkins Security MVP. Uh, voting is available until March 22 through this Google form that's linked here. Any questions on any of those news items? Okay, next then on action items, attribution ent entries for the downloads page. Basil, you want to share with us what the current state of the, th of the things are there? I don't really have an update from last time, but it's still on my to-do list, so... Great. I'm still hoping to get to that. I'm I'm sorry it's taken so long. That's that's actually thank you for being willing to do it. Great. All right. And Kevin, Kevin and I have not made any progress on retiring the Chinese Jenkins site. Kevin is out of office. And so when he when he returns from holiday, he and I will spend some time on it. This one, I think, is relatively low priority. The, the cost to serve that site and the cost to maintain it are very low. It's just we'd rather not mislead our Chinese users by showing them Chinese content that's badly out of date. Any, any other topics for action items? Okay, next then, community activity. 
Google Summer of Code preparation. There is a lot of traffic around Google Summer of Code as typical at this time of year. And thanks very much for those who are managing it. Chris Stern, Bruno Verach, and others. Thanks very much. They've they've elicited, they've added additional contributors like Valentin Dallet and two or three other crucial voices there in that in that for in that Google Summer of Code project. Thanks. And upcoming this week, Bruno Verachten will be highlighted in the contributor spotlight. Congratulations, Bruno. Thanks for your contributions. Look. Topics on governance side, Azure expense status. We didn't have the final bill as of last meeting. We know what it was for February now. It was four thousand two hundred U.S. dollars, very nicely under the five thousand that CDF budgets for us. So big congratulations to Damien, to Hervé, and to Stefan. They it was we were typically running on the order of ten thousand a month about a year ago, and so cutting the cutting the costs in half while still providing the same services is impressive. We're also grateful to AWS that they've donated $60,000 to the Jenkins project. We've received the credits. We're not yet applying those credits to Jenkins tasks because we've got to spread work when we do these kind of projects and that spreading of work takes some time from the infra team. Now we did have a, a, a proprietary component that was detected by Daniel Beck the Delphix plugin, it turns out in recent releases, is using a proprietary component. It's noted in the issue tracker, and the Delphix maintainers very promptly responded to it, saying, hey, here, we would like to do this as our proposed fix. And Daniel said, yeah, that sounds like a reasonable thing. We'll let it sit for now. They've, they're about three days into a five-day time window that they agreed with Daniel on. So we hope for progress or further resolution on this before the end of this week. Any questions on that one? Sometimes those proprietary component questions generate topics, generate additional questions. Okay, last one then is Java 11 end of life and the spring end of public support. And I apologize, I didn't put this one in a separate developer mailing list thread. I'll, I'll start that discussion in the developer list as well. The Spring Project has announced that their end of public support for Spring 5.3 and Spring Security 5.8 is the last build will be in August of 2024, which is official end of open source support, August 31. So what that means for us is the Spring version that we include will be off their support as of August 31. But the next spring versions require, well, spring security requires Jetty 11, which is using Jakarta EE9, and spring framework 6.1 requires Java 17. So we've got this window of time from August 31 of 2024 to October 31 of 2024, where we would be running a version of spring that the spring project does not support. Now, I don't have great solutions yet in terms of this. One idea was accept the, the windows open. And if a vulnerability is there, we, we may have to fork the code and fix it ourselves. Uh, I'm open to other ideas and I will certainly begin discussions in the mailing list. Mark to start discussions. To find alternatives, right? I read the uh, Sprig blog post announcing this, and there were some comments about how the date was a little earlier than they had previously communicated publicly. And um, I think one of their project leaders replied to the comment, effectively saying, "You know, we're sorry, but we're we're sticking to the August date, even though there was some ambiguity previously about whether that would be in August or in December." Mm -hmm. So I think um, we weren't the only project that was surprised by this timeline. Right. Well, and, and I like your noting that it seems likely to stick because so they've been asked, hey, we were hoping you would last till December. And, and the spring project says, nope, sorry, we're really going to stay with August 31.
any other comments or concerns there certainly i will bring it to the um uh, i will bring it to the mailing list for further discussion i think we need to to find a path forward that will work for us and it, it maybe it's an exception to the the support policy based on this al this first alternative that i note here or it could be that we accelerate java java 11 end of life it's just if we accelerate that's really challenging because then we've got it's a three month acceleration for us and that's a, that brings all sorts of complications that that then makes us deprecating something that we said would last till october now happening three months earlier and i'm not sure will be popular with our users either well, we still use a very old version of Groovy that hasn't been updated in mm, many, right. many years. So, right. I guess that's a good point. This is this is certainly not the worst example of of an old component that we use. Good. All right. Any other comments or concerns on that topic? All right, that covered all the topics then that I had. Anything else that we need to discuss today? All right, let's call it a good enough meeting then. Thanks very much. Thanks.